I wouldn't either introduce it to my sister. <clears throat> but now, now we have Black Seed, yeah, just put Chris, uh, Chris Hansen. <laughs> now we have um, <laughs> can I buy you my Black Seed already, I guess. I right, you want to. I mean, I'll just tell you to introduce yourselves and you just introduce it to her, you know. Hi, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so when you're ready. Yeah. I'm going to go first. Um, so, how would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, Chris Hansen. Yeah, Black Slip member from 1972. Oh, you know that? You're from Oh, you start. Oh, you start already. Oh, really? Okay. So, who are you? Chris um, Hansen, a Black Slip from 1972. Yeah, I'm the drummer, Desmond Mahoney. Been around from the beginning. Ancient times. Uh, I'm the baby uh, of the group. I go by the name of Gavin. I'm also the son of Anthony Brightley, um, the original keyboard player. Uh, and yeah, I'm the singer. Okay, now how, how, did, how did Black Slate start? Um, we, you know, like we just start recruiting one another from because we live in pretty much the same area you know north and east london so um some of a lot quite a few of the members before we was even black slate before we had a name you know we um decided a couple of us decided that we wanted to play music um, and me and a brethren called Clive Wilson. And then, little by little, we check other people that had the same interests. And we got round to Chris. We got round to Gavin, Dad, Anthony Brightly. And, uh, yeah, we just come together. There was other members like Cledwin Rogers, Paget King, great Paget King. And we just um, start doing a thing. We ended up at Phoebe's nightclub and we start back talent competition, became the backing band actually for the talent competition. And a um, few members change over the years and we, our first name was Young Ones from Zion. <laughs> and we decided that we couldn't um, stay young forever. So after that, um, round about, I don't know, 73, 74. So Chris decided, um, Chris came up with the idea on how the name thing come about. So Chris can explain all of that for you. <clears throat> name Black State came about because, because being black and, and of course we are communicate through music. Communication is, it comes in many forms through um, speech, written, um, music, etc. And then, of course, I grew up on Slate that used to write on in, in, in um, junior school, pay up, uh, kindergarten, so to speak. Jamaica school. Jamaica yeah. school, yeah. Jamaica kindergarten school. So you'll find that as communication, we use Slate. And then, of course, um, I grew up in, in, in the um, age of apprenticeship in England because I came to England at the age 14 and uh, where we work at post office, we use the communication, um, we, we repair communication equipment and of course one of the wires in it was black slate, that's another form of communication so the wire carry um, signal. So I relate that to our music communicating through uh, slate and be black. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it was. So how did you come into it, sir? Oh, wow. Um, okay, so uh, um, I guess I guess I've 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 always grown up doing music. Um, I've been in many many different bands. 
Um, even at one stage, I played drums and so I got into singing and I was singing with um, a group I had, an R&B mm -hmm. group. And um, in around 2000, I'll say 13, 14, um, I, uh, I spoke to a, I spoke to a gentleman and, um, he was telling me <coughs> that he was singing for my, doing backing for my, for my dad's band. And, um, so, uh, it kind of, I don't know, it just got me interested into finding out about how the band's getting on and because I knew they were like really big when, um, when I was a baby. And so it was interesting just to find out how they were getting on. And um, cut a long story short, I just felt like I could sing for them. Um, and so I approached my dad at one stage <clears throat> and um, I, I kind of I suggested that I was more suited to the band <laughs> than the other singers that I've seen. Maybe that's the way of putting it. And, Mm. So but he wanted to test me and, and see how I would do. So he gave me, he gave me some, he gave me like five or so CDs, albums worth like 30 to 40 tunes like to learn. And um, so yeah, I, I, I took it seriously, went home, studied it like, I'd study any, any um, subject. And yeah, I was, I, I was ready and prepared. So he came and he filmed me. I know I, I don't know if he was ready for 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 what I knew I could do. But uh yeah, I just I just took it really seriously and I thought to myself, this is like a good opportunity to kinda learn. Mm. So yeah, I did my best and um yeah. Cut a long story short, they, they accepted me in, in, into the group and... So how did you lot feel at first? <laughs> For him to, to get involved? Do you think he was ready? Was he too young? Did you need new life into the group? Well, Do you from, ever have doubts? For, for me, I see it as an ex exciting era because we were young too at one stage. Mm. And we went through um, everything you can think of. Bearing in mind, we also like Desmond said, the, the, the talent competition at Phoebe's. So we saw all the young, promising artists who oh, it was great joy to have them around because it also gave you inspiration um, and, and, to, and to work with young people now, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. What do you think the difference is between how you got, obviously there's so many differences, but how you mm -hmm. got come up doing music and this generation of doing music? For you mm -hmm. lot first, obviously experience, yeah. experiencing both. What do you think the differences are? Is it harder? Is it easier? I think making music right now is much easier. Um, but the type, of, the type of music we did then were more naturally, the natural feel as opposed to an artificial aided through computer efforts, you know? Uh, but mm -hmm. I guess they're doing very well incorporating the computer style with their own feeling. And I, I kind of feel it drifting more into um, the automatic transition of feeling with um, with electronics. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, for say, um, for when when we when the rest of us meet Gavin still, we we could see the talent anyway. So whether it was in the seventies when we was just coming, or now he it is ninety two thousand. Man of the talent still, see me I say? And when Gavin come in, you could tell, say, him could handle the, the thing. So, yeah, it was, he, he just got welcome straight away, cause, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I have to say, it's, 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 it's difficult, cause, um, I don't know, I, I guess growing, growing up listening to reggae, like, is, is almost like a soundtrack to your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're used to like Sunday, you're hearing reggae while mom's cooking or whatever the but you know. And um but I, I don't know, I kinda shied away from it or when I was younger it felt like ah oh, that's my parents' music like so I wasn't I wasn't really 
I'll tell you the truth, I used to like, I love Bob Marley, but I, I used to like the more rebel, rebellious mm. kind of side. So, um, coming up, so, so when, so when I got the opportunity to do, to sing with my dad and, 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 and the guys, um, it still, it still was a question mark in my head, like, um, of, of feeling like I'm authentic. Cause I, cause I was used to like R and B, you know, more pop, you know what I mean? Music. And so it was always a test to me to like, ah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm and to be honest, the more the more welcoming they, they were, the more it's just been easier to... And the more I've realised in myself, like, they, how much reggae is, like, part of me and how important it is. Yeah, so, I don't know. I, I guess that's thanks more to them because, like I said, when I came in, it was just more, like, to study and to see, like, okay, I've always been into music, but... What can I learn? What can I, what can I get from them? So, yeah. and what's it been like working with your dad? Because it's professional. Supposed to be professional. You're yeah. Singer, yeah. You're all different mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Is he still your dad with you in the band? <laughs> <laughs> now nah, there's moments in it. There's, there's times where you know we'll be sitting around and like I just totally forget he's my dad. Like, okay. Yeah, because they kind of let me be me sometimes. That's good sometimes. <laughs> so but that's I, I mean it's this great it you know what I really think like I just keep saying is this um I'm just thankful to kind of be in a situation where you can you can be with um you know the next generation and be working close and because your passion is the same passion then you really find that there's not much difference like I often say like to my own friends, like, yo, being around, being around these lot is just like being around my own friends, like, mm-hmm. cracking the same jokes. It's just the age difference <laughs> and the time in it is just, but everything's still relatable. So, yeah, it's just these lot are funny, Andy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the um, What's the difference when you was touring back in the day and how you tour recent? What's the, What's the difference? What's the difference there, Chief? Um, for me, yeah, I have to say it's similar still, you know, because um, the venue, I think back in the days, um, touring and thing, the ve- we had a lot, I think you had a lot more venues, like we did a lot more universities and college, which you don't get reggae doing so much these days. Um, and from you come out of England, whether it was America, Australia, New Zealand, Holland, Belgium, I think the, the same kind of welcome is there. People love reggae. The further you go, it coming like the more them like reggae. You understand? So, and even back in the 70s when it was late 70s when um, whether it was Bob Marley, Burning Spear, Jimmy Clifford, Black Slate, Tour, um, you get the same warm welcoming people was just hungry for it. And you have to say, now in today, um, internationally, I think it's registered a lot more and it's gone a lot deeper. Cause you go America, you da every every little town you go, you da get hundreds of bands playing reggae, not just black. It's white, pink, yellow, every kind of people you can think about. Now, how you not, feel about that when you come like the not necessarily the originators, but you was you did it, you started it at a time where it was difficult to be accepted. Mm. You know, had so much against you. So if is it is it freeing now, and you just like. I don't matter about how they was acting before. <laughs> well, like, everything is alright. Or I, I think because like, people are copy, not necessarily copying, uh, but now like, everyone's doing it and yeah, it's being yeah. accepted <clears throat> by people that are originating. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The culture's not original. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For certain yeah. people that are doing it, for them. Mm. it's copying it. I people think may, may, maybe it's a generation thing still. Car, back in the 
middle to late 70s when we were touring, whether it was England or further, um, you find people, reggae was always accepted. I think more it was more society or the man who owned the venue that was skeptical about bringing reggae in. Because either them never want it and never want to give it a chance or them f was not too sure how their crowd would react to it. You see what I say? But everywhere we go back then or today, people always accept reggae. Where the barrier comes must be to do with either the media or, well, society in general. You see me, I say, want to put a hole, you know, or stifle the thing from going further. You see, but the younger generation now, like me say, um, you find they're becoming reggae musicians. So it's not only Jamaican or English that play reggae. You find in Australia, you have reggae band. In New Zealand, Rurs, yeah. Samoa, Fiji. All of them places, Holland, Belgium, there's X amount, every city you go in, there's X amount of reggae band. Yeah. So reggae has always been accepted. Reggae has always worked down. Black people, white people, anybody. Mm -hmm. Reggae always brought down barrier. Who never like it, soon like it. Mm -hmm. Just five minutes after them start here, them start stamp them feet and tomorrow them wake up, them can't forget it. So reggae have always broken down barriers that way. You understand? So yeah. Take off for me now. What's, what's, what's the difference between then and now is one, to, to really see the influence we had all those years on the people who is playing it now. Um, I remember um, in California, a band came to us and said, well, you lot were the people who we listen to the music, listen to the sound and try to emulate the sound to get our sound. So that was, that was really thrilling for me and I'm sure for Desmond and Anthony and, mm. and yeah, Gavin probably lick the yeah. as such. But that, and the second thing um, is the amount of people who never thought they would ever see us live. All of a sudden, this band who was in the 70s, 80s, 90s, come forward in time. Yeah, I can definitely attest <laughs> to that. Like in New Zealand, that's, I think, um, that's yeah it's just things like that has kind of <laughs> just uh, made me realize how big reggae is even just to me as well like because just like chris is saying the in places like new zealand the way that they remember and just like as he said they'll come and they'll say like yo we, we were copying you like we're still copying you you know so it's just yeah, to this, like, like, exactly what Chris and Des is saying, that once, well, like Bob's saying, isn't it? Once, mm. once it hits you, you just feel mm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so then let me ask you a question, that like, because obviously it seemed like you are modest when you hear that. Mm. Did you, was there a stage where you knew who you was or what you was doing and what you was going to become? And did it, and if that is the case, did you find your human side and be like, okay, I'm not some big celebrity, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And that's where the modesty comes from when you go on tour and they're like, I was listening to you in the 70s mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. How, how do you feel about that? Like, We had no idea that it was, it was going to get to, to this. When we first started, it was for love. Like Desmond said earlier, and a bunch of people just get together and we start playing music. Mm -hmm. um, it was a song I heard by Rita Franklin, Spanish Harlem, that got me into wanting to play guitar. And I never dreamt of fame um, in no way whatsoever. And it just evolved from that. And all of a sudden, you know, it get popular. And yeah. we just fit mm -hmm. our, our umbilical lives in this popularity. Mm -hmm. Cause you, you yeah, cause as a young musician, you always set yourself so well. You hear about like Bob Marley, Toots and the Mantles, Jimmy Cliff and you as a youngster would I like aspire to be 
and some of the places like certain theaters or venues that you hear people playing at you know what I mean you would have liked to reach them place there too you would have liked your to be on TV you would have liked for your record to play up on the radio but you know it's not something you really is something in the back of your mind will say, yeah, boy, I can do that, you know. So you work hard and you practice and you do your thing. But when, it, when you finally got there, that some a bridge will say, boy, I hear your tune from the radio, you know. It's uplifting. It's not, not nothing for sure off about. You just, it's, it's just, you just accept it as part of the journey. It's this, amazing. I think they're very, they're very unique individuals um to and they are they're just the modesty is is it's not a facade it's not a, this just who they mm. are um i don't know i get a, like even me like you know i'm i guess i'm the one that kind of uh i can kind of sit on the outside a little bit more and um and it's just true. I, I think it goes hand in hand, isn't it? Like they wouldn't be they wouldn't be where they are if they weren't who they are. And simply mm -hmm. the fact that who they are is kinda you know, got them to mm -hmm. certain levels and yeah, I, 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 I don't think they ever they ever really know I don't think they'll ever really know how important they are. Um but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because mm. I don't know. I just I guess that's the the special source or whatever. You well, I mean, you're a part of that legacy now. You yeah. That, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're still touring. Yeah. Yes. You're still out there. Yeah. Mm. And you're the lead singer. Yeah. I. I. It's just to me. Is this? Uh, and you're a part of. History. Yeah. Well, you're a part of black. Reggae yeah. history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget. Yeah, that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we're, um, we're still humbly the same because. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. We, we come from humble, humble beginnings. We met each other. We're humble, and we're still humble now. I mean, yeah. first of all, I, I was born in Trenchtown, Jamaica, and it's humble beginnings. Humble, and mm. even though the achievement is important, we still have to remember the humble side mm. of life. You know, mm. and hopefully we can extend that to people who um, want to go through because sometimes it's not the hype bring you through just being humble and some of the love that humbleness and then what my door for them mm -hmm. you know, for that, me it's just really rewarding to, to, to just know to I don't yeah to know that there's there's no need there's, there's no need if you can if you can do what they've done or even just a bit of what they've done, and see how they handle it. That just brings you right down to ground zero. Mm -hmm. Like it, yeah. Like I say, I'm the baby in it. So, yeah. To me, I don't know. It's just what they've done is just amazing, and I I just feel like, wow. Okay, so it's time to suit up, strap up, and. What do you not feel? How do you feel about being a part of uh, Nina Simone's history? Because now mm. we're getting to young, gifted, and black. Yeah. Does that? How does that? How does that make you feel? That like? because she was so influential. Yeah, man. Nina Simone is a great. Is one of our favorite um, legend and artist, lady singer. You know, um, she write, perform some great songs. You know what I mean? Like. Enough of she's, I would have to say, one of the people that inspired me. And enough of our generation as, you know, like culturally and sticking up for what's right. It's a matter Nina Simone, you have many great artists, whether they were like Americans, African, you know what I mean? Um, Mary Makiba, Fela Kute, um, um, people like... Curtis Mayfield, you know, there was in those days, those times, a lot of people was talking the, the right thing, mm -hmm. 
culturally, spiritually. And Nina, Nina, Nina Simone was one of those people and very influential. So yeah, it's give us great pleasure for now so we can come today and do one of our songs. You know what I mean? And let the new gen younger generation experience that as well. Okay, so for each of you, because I'm going to go, this is probably like the conclusion to it. I'm going to mm. ask each of you what it means to you. What, maybe what it means to you to be young, mm. what young, black and gifted means, what it means to you. And maybe a message for the young people at the same time as well. Because I know mm. this is for everybody. Mm. But key word, young. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? They, a lot of people don't know how important every minute of the day you know, if it for black people mm. or being a black person means, yeah, yeah you should be young, live your mm. life. But as we were talking before, saving. Mm. If you if you remember to save from eighteen, then yeah. you can't go wrong. Mm. So, what does it mean to each of you? What young black and gifted? The young gifted and black um, is is a topic for um, black people, whether we young middle age or old now the fact that it's young gifted and black it means you, got, you have an early start in life to pick up the rain and run with it you're gonna find a lot of negative um you know uh, um, thoughts come towards you because you weren't supposed to realize that you're, you're gifted um and it might even come from your peers you know so it come from, from a cross-section of, of, of the people so you have to recognize the talent you have, um, whether it be a songwriter or a dancer, mm. right across the board, you're here for a reason. And that gift you have, you must portray it and, and extend it, extend it to, to, to others so they can also benefit, just like how we can look back on, on that song, Young Gifted and Black, and relate to that many, many years after. And that's, mm. that's to me the most important thing with, 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 with with, with um, the idea of young gifted and black. Yeah. yeah, man. And it's like you, anything you're good at, you know, you have to remember, so you have to work hard to really achieve and set goals. Always have a plan and get up at the time and work towards the plan. There, you see me, I say? And just develop your skill and you're going to meet people along the way and people is going to maybe say criticize or whatever but still you have to listen still as a youngster you have to listen to elder people people who even have to criticize you but don't get discouraged from it. something that you want to achieve or you want to do whether it's you as an electrician or um, a drummer, you want to be a scientist or that. It's all possible as long as you, as, as you work hard towards your goal. You see what I say? So yeah, to be young, gifted and black is not just something that's going to happen overnight. It's a lot of things you have to endure. You see what I say? And you can't give up. As long as you keep that fire burning, keep that dream going. You see me? And knowing that one day you might have to turn around and mentor an a youth who was young like you and bring him to and encourage him. You see me, I say. Because each one teach one. Today me have the button, tomorrow you have the button. It's like a relay thing, yeah, where, you know what I mean? So everyone have to teach a one and pass on the experience whether it be a drummer, bass player, or singer. Just stick to your goal and never be afraid to listen to whether a elder or a younger person give advice. You see me? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I see young, gifted and black like, I don't know, like a mantra or something. Um, for me, it's almost... It's like a, it, it, it's like a feeling and a, and a, a vibe really like of an everyday thing. 
to kind of remember that, remember that, remember that. Mm-hmm. You know, in in good times and in bad times, because even even though you know you you have your good times and it's you shouldn't really forget um, your roots. You know, and that's what to me, young, gifted, and black is about. Like the root of things. Like you know, when you're young, you know, that's. Mm-hmm. To me, this that in itself is like you being born is like a is like a great thing. You know, we've been through a lot, a lot of oppression and things that's held us back, and so, so to me, yeah, it's like a daily thing to just remember, remember, remember. Yeah, that you're young, you know, you're gifted, gifted and, and yeah. black. I remember say talent is a discipline. You see me, I say? Yeah. yeah it's it's, it's, yeah. You have to have the discipline. No matter what it is, the discipline has to be there. Yeah. And you have to respect what you're doing. Yeah. Respect yourself first of all. True. You see? And then respect what you do. And the people them you come in contact with. Yeah. And, and your brethren them who you work with. Mm. Respect. Discipline. You see me, I say? And, you know, no, don't make nobody deviate you from your goal. Yeah. yeah, because oh. sorry, sorry, because you have all this destruction now, whereby you have to live up to the the, the um, expectation of others. Mm. You have all these, these social media destruction. Mm. Yes, it might take part in your progress and your upliftment, but it also have a negative vibe and it will slow you down. You know. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that. Yeah, I think it's important. Especially nowadays, like, you know, I, I, I almost feel like um, because the older generation, they kind of know a bit more about the history and, and, and things that happen. So um, even even just the whole thought and feeling of young, gifted mm-hmm. and black, you know, they had James Brown with, yeah. you know, um, say it loud. Like, say it loud. loud. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel like um, today... I think it's like a very important message as well because I don't. Um, there are there are a lot of artists that are even Stormzy like big shout out to him and things that he's doing like continuing to push the message that yeah, young mm-hmm. young and black and you know not to forget like where we come from and who we who we are because we still got fights that we still um, you know want to overcome and stuff like that so. Yeah, I think it's just an important thing for the youth to to just know. I, I almost feel like like they don't they have this like self doubt, um, and I they, for multiple reasons, um, you know. Mm-hmm. But I just think that in general, uh, the youth just need to really understand that that, that there's like you know that fire that you have in you that like Des was talking mm-hmm. about. It's important to know, you know, even how to control that and use it to the best of its ability so you're getting the best out of yourself. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, you know, yeah. Yeah, man, Carl, and we have enough example out there. Yeah. We have Bob Marley, yeah. Burning Spear, Marcia Griffith. You see, we have Akon. Yeah. We have the young lady who just come up, coffee. Yeah, coffee. You know what I mean? So there's many examples. We have Marcus Garvey, you see me? We have, whether it's Mandela or whoever, as black leaders, yeah. Kwame Nkrumah, you know, there's many. That great example. Yes, <laughs> that yeah. even there's time when you go to doubt yourself or down, feel a little down, you just have to, you know, take up a book or listen to a record and get back to Harry Tubman or great leaders who go through enough strain and tribulation and never give up. Yeah. You see me, I say? And go through and tell today we can sit down and reason and talk about them. Because it's all part of the journey. Mm. You see me, I say? Whether young or old. How you feel about being unapolog- <coughs> unapologetically black though? Because Stormzy, because yes. I, was, I was really going to bounce off what you said about Stormzy. Right. Because, mm. you know, Sometimes you get scared yeah. to just be real and say, I think yeah. this is a black problem. Yeah. Like, oh, like, you know, yeah. you're doing this because you're scared that. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Is, so yeah. How do you feel about that issue? Mm. Is it 
we're at a stage where everyone's mixing. Yeah. So it ain't just a black thing when it comes to reggae. Everyone's right. doing it. Yeah. So is it 50 50? Should we embrace the mix? Yeah. But still remember we are black? Or. I don't you know. You ever heard someone say, um, why does it have to be about yeah, race? Yeah. 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 It's like, man, we didn't start this. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't yeah, start yeah, saying yeah. we're black, you know. Yeah. Like, you no, know, it's about not that? about race, but, you know, um, I, I am black, so I have to... It's, it's like what they said is about starting with yourself. It's, a, it's about really just starting with yourself and looking into mm-hmm. yourself. See, the issue that we have is that, you know, because of history and because of, you know you know, the things that we've been through. Unfortunately, we have to kind of maybe say that a bit more than everybody else because, you know, um, you know, not to say that they don't have their difficulties or their traumatic issues going on, but to where we are and like, and looking at, and looking at, you know, the kids and stuff like that, the black kids coming up, it's just about really understanding yourself and really just getting in tune with yourself. So that's what we mean by by what we're saying, you know. Mm. I am black and I'm proud. Yes. That's because I mm. am black. And you mm. should be proud of whoever you are and whatever you are. Yeah, there's no... There's no, there's no uh, Everybody uh, have them road to travel. Yeah. So may I say, we just travel in our road. And no matter what it is, we will always be ourselves. You see what I say? And we're not going to make the media or whatever draw we out or divert we. We think the way we think because and we want to encourage the youths. Music has no colour still now. You see what I say? And it shouldn't have any barrier. So. Whether it's a black or youth or a Chinese youth or African youth come a concert, them come for concert for one thing, for listen to music. Mm. You see me I say, oh them live them private lives, it's for them business. You see me I say? So as a elder musician now, my thing is just to do the best what I can, see, musically, and to uplift people and to receive back that same energy. And as long as I am do, getting that vibe back from the people and giving that vibe to the people, I will always play music, you yeah. see me, I say, and encourage the youngster them to develop what they have and encourage them to go on and do better things. So I now go really say, boy, going on. What the Chinese is doing, or what this European youth is doing, or what. You see, my business, I'm about my business. No, I hear that. That's good. Well done. That was sick. That was great, man. Yeah, for me, you know. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, well, well, well. Don't worry, so that was good. Snitches, yeah. Yeah, for me, you know, being black. There's no apology for that, because we, we never make that. The creator created the thing, and it lead us into this direction, and here we are, to, to uh, 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 announce our arrival. You see, when we have our rendition of who we are, and we see all different nationality and nation in front, then really come to check out our black rendition of what we have to offer the world. And if they never respect the thoughts of what we have to offer or that they want to learn from us, they wouldn't really come out and check it out. You see, for all those people who want cars, whatever they want to cause, for whatever reason, they themselves benefit from our existence. So as much as they want to upfront kind of fight it and fight black people, 
when they go home at night time, they really consider about themselves and look at them conscience and say, you know what? Them man, they have something for offer, you know. But for whatever reason, them are continue to fight. But it's a kind of breakdown a way where there's more avenues and like you said, the integration of other nations into other nations and into other nations. I got the common goal. Life. And we have to live on. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like it, man. Nah, that was good, man. <laughs>